All right, so I know in the last video, it was a lot of theory and a lot of kind of basic fundamentals of what Pascal's principle is. In this video, I wanna take a look at sort of a practical situation or a scenario using Pascal's principle. So again, we have this definition here uh, in an enclosed system that contains static fluid increasing the pressure at one point in the system will increase the pressure at all points inside of the liquid. So let's say that we had some kind of container here, and this is this is my container. It contains this liquid with a mass density of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. The container is three meters tall, and at the very top there's this little piston, so it's like a little steel piston that we're going to apply some sort of force to. Now remember, this principle is only for fluids that are enclosed in a container that contains static fluid. So all of this fluid inside the container is at rest. It is filled to the very, very top of this container. And more importantly, the mass density is constant. So let's actually see this principle in practice. So if I were to go to the very top and I applied some sort of a force, I'll just call this, let's say force one. And force one is just gonna be 100 newtons of force. So we're just going to apply 100 newtons of force to the top of this container onto this little piston. Now remember, this force applied to some sort of area here at the very top is going to cause an increase in pressure all throughout this fluid or this container. So let's say the area of the piston itself, so the area of this thingy here, so area, I'll just call area one, this is gonna be 0 0.25 meters squared. So you can just assume that it's a circular piston with this uh, cross-sectional area. So I'll just go ahead and write that here on the side so it's nice and consistent, 0 0.25 meters squared. So what is the pressure at the very top of this container? Or what is the pressure being applied by this piston at the top? Well, we know the equation for pressure. Uh, pressure is just force over area. So if I took these two values and I said pressure of one is force of one over area of one, well, we get 100 newtons of force divided by 0 0.25 meters squared. And the resulting pressure is going to be 400 Pascal. So this is the pressure being applied to this piston at the very top of the container. We have 400 Pascals of pressure. Back at Pascal's principle in an enclosed system that contains static fluid, increasing the pressure at one point. So we just did that, right? We applied a force F1 to this piston. So this force caused some sort of pressure increase to this liquid. Uh, in this case, that pressure was applied from the top due to this piston. So because this principle says that increasing the pressure at one point, which is this point right here, then the pressure at all points in the liquid are going to increase. So in other words, this 400 pascals of, of pressure uh, being applied at the top of the container, now suddenly all the pressure inside of this container is increased by 400 pascals. So the pressure here, the pressure here, the pressure here, the pressure at the bottom, the pressure all throughout this container, all that pressure increases by 400 pascals. So if we increase the pressure inside of this container from this force, well, what is the resulting pressure at the bottom? Well, the bottom is still gonna be 400 pascals of pressure, but that is actually going to change the force being applied at the very bottom of the container, right? Because this area right here is bigger than the area of this piston. So let's actually use some numbers and figure out what the resulting force at the bottom of the container due to this increase in pressure at the top is going to be. Now remember, F1 is 100 newtons of force, but that was applied over this small area, this 0.25 meters squared of area. Now at the very bottom, so I'm gonna scroll down just a tiny bit, at the very bottom, this area, which I will just call area two, which is also the area of the bottom of the container, let's say this was 0 
meters squared. So area one is 0.25 meters squared, area two, or the area of the bottom, is 0.75 meters squared. Now the question here is what is force two, right? What is this value of the force being applied to the bottom of this container due to F1, due to this force right there? So again, pressure is equal to force over area. And in this case, I'll just call the pressure at the bottom uh, pressure two. And this pressure two is located at the bottom, but this pressure is going to be just the pressure at the bottom of the container induced by this F1 value, right? The pressure at the top. So pressure is force over area. So force two divided by area two. Well, we know what area two is, right? It's just 0.75 meters squared. Uh, and we're trying to figure out what F2 is. Now, what is this pressure two? Well, remember, we're just studying the pressure increase due to F1. So remember, again, the principle states, in an enclosed system that contains static fluid, increasing the pressure at one point in the system will increase the pressure at all points in the liquid by that pressure. So the pressure at the top was this P1 value of 400 pascals. So we know that 400 pascals of pressure is being applied all throughout this container, including the bottom, right? So pressure two in this case is going to be 400 pascals. So 400 pascals equals F2 divided by the area, which is 0 0.75 meters squared. Now if you multiply 0 0.75 uh, on, on both sides, we would get F2 and F2 in this case is 300 newtons. Now this force, this F2 force is the force being applied at the bottom of this container due to the pressure increase from the piston at the top. So you can see that we only had to apply a force of 100 newtons over this small area at the very top of the container and that increased the force at the bottom of this container by in this case a factor of three, right? We went from 100 newtons of force at the top to 300 newtons of force at the bottom. And that is really the beauty of Pascal's principle. And this idea is going to come into play when we study hydraulic systems, how we can increase the force over a small area, which increases the force on another area in the system that has a bigger surface area, right? Will, which will induce a bigger force. But remember, there's one very, very important thing uh, to note here. This F2 value that we found out is simply the force caused or the force at the very bottom of this container due to F1, not due to the actual liquid contained inside of the container, right? That's going to be an additional force. If we were to study the idea of pressure, right? Pressure, well, the pressure at the bottom is really going to be uh, the pressure increase that we had here of 400 pascals plus the pressure due to the actual liquid inside of the container, right? So uh, in other words, the pressure at the bottom is not simply equal to P2. So the pressure at the bottom is not equal to this P2 value that we found out here, but rather it is equal to P2 plus the pressure due to the liquid, which is rho GH, right? So remember, pressure two is just the pressure caused by this F1 force at the very top, right? Increasing F1 here, increased the pressure all throughout the container. And that is uniform, right? Because of this constant mass density. So pressure two is gonna be 400 pascals all throughout this container. And that's what this term is, right? And then we still have to consider the actual liquid inside of this container, right? And how do we find pressure of a liquid, well, that's just the mass density times the gravitational constant times how deep it is uh, from the very top of that surface. So let's actually calculate that just for fun, because we like doing calculations for fun. Well, pressure two, again, was 400 pascals, plus the mass density in this case was given. It is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed 
Our gravitational constant is 9.81 meters per second squared. And then finally, our h was 3 meters. So that was this depth of the actual container. Now, if we calculated all of this out, this would actually be about 29,830 pascals, or about 29.8 kilopascals. So that is the total pressure, that is P bottom, at the very bottom of this container. And that pressure is really due to two factors, right? One being the actual liquid contained inside of the container, and two, the pressure increase caused by this force one acting on this piston.